Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. This is RDNA Free Support VLIW2. And if it does, what does that even mean? And what are the performance ramifications? Well, we're going to be discussing that and much more in this video, as a lot of stuff has happened concerning AMD's next generation of GPUs. As we get closer to the launch of both RTX 40 and um, RX 8000 series, I assume, well, things are getting rather interesting, and we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. Did you just build a shiny new PC? Then you'll need a genuine copy of Windows 10 so you can personalize the system and of course get rid of that annoying activation watermark. We've partnered with WhoKeys to give you guys great discounts on Windows 10 keys and of course they can be fully upgraded to Windows 11 too. You can get 30% off using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several of these keys in the past using a personal non-RGT affiliated account and they've worked flawlessly with quick delivery. If you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $15 or a cheap and legit copy of Office, check the links out in the video description below. I won't go over all of the previous information that I've discussed about Narve 31 as well as the other SKUs. I'll leave a link into a previous video if you want to check that out. But basically speaking, we are getting more and more certain at this stage that uh, N31 is comprised of a single GCD. This houses all the things like shaders, ROPs, TMUs, blah, blah, blah. And it looks like it's got 48 workgroup processors. Combine this with a nice healthy amount of Infinity Cache. We're looking at almost certainly 384 uh, megabytes, although I've also heard 192 megabytes of Infinity Cache. I don't know which one's correct at this point. Perhaps it's dependent on the SKU with some disabled. I honestly don't know. But for this video, I'm going to say 384 megabytes. And this is also combined with a 384-bit GDDR6 bus. So this is going to be um, quite a lot of bandwidth, honestly. I'm hearing it's going to be around four to five terabytes per second of equivalent bandwidth that this GPU has. Thanks, of course, to the wide bus, um, the Infinity Cache, also known as the MCDs, and, well, just the clock frequency that this GPU is going to be running on. Again, you can see the specifications on the screen, but there is an asterisk here, and that is concerning the number of shaders or FP32 units, as there has been a couple of very interesting developments on that front. So for some time now, we've thought that there are basically um, major changes when it comes to the work group processor arrangement of RDNA3. And basically, compute units, quote unquote, have pretty much been gone, done away with. And rather than the dual um, compute unit kind of structure of RDNA 2, where you have 128 shaders per um, workgroup processor, now basically you can just simplify it anyway for this video, it's 256. But there could actually be somewhat of an asterisk here, and it concerns VLIW2. Now, AMD have a number of patents for this, and it's quite an in-depth conversation and topic of what it actually is. But the best and easiest way to describe it to someone is that you can kind of think of it as hyper-threading for a um, FP32 unit on a GPU. Now, it isn't quite like that, but it gives you a kind of a leg up to understand how it works. Basically, each FP FP32, if I can say it, basically it can issue two instructions. Now, it's a lot more complicated than that, and honestly, I'm still learning exactly whether RDNA3 does support this, and if it does, I'll do a much more in-depth analysis in the not too distant future um, just kind of put an asterisk there for now in your brain you could do some googling on it um, again VLIW2 and there are numbers of patents of this you know kind of popping up but the reason that it's more likely at this stage that RDNA3 does support this well there's a few reasons one we've seen some reference to it in the drivers now I have to say driver references do not necessarily mean anything because these cards are not released yet so features can be enabled by accident maybe they're spe for specific lines of gpus maybe pro cards i'm just throwing it out there we don't 100 percent know at this stage but there is a couple of other interesting things this first is that um well, basically, Grayman and I have been discussing a lot RDNA free specifications in DM, along with some other people. I don't think they'd like me to say who I'm talking to, so I'll just say other people. And um, 
And one of the things that I was asked by Grayman is, is RDNA3 um, an architecture which does support VLIW2? Now, up until this point, I hadn't heard anything very specifically about this, only that there were some changes in how instructions were handled for the GPU, but not really anything new, basically additional instructions perhaps. And interestingly, and this is a slight tangent, although I'm not really certain how much faith I put in this particular rumor, allegedly for FFSR2, um, basically, apparently it has improvements running on RDNA 3's architecture. I don't exactly know how that would work, perhaps specific instructions, I don't know. But again, I kind of took what Grayman was asking me here and started to ask around. And one of my sources told me that they think it's very possible that VLIW2 is supported with RDNA 3, but they are not 100% certain. So basically, I've asked a whole bunch of people and I'm trying to dig into it. So what does this actually mean? Well, now we go back to that workgroup processor number because now things start to get a little murkier because remember the 12,000 shaders well the question is now in essence are the 12,000 shaders accounting for VLIW2 or not so basically at this stage it could be 6,000, I'm just going to round up and down for everyone's sanity, mostly my own. But yeah, are we looking at 6,000 shaders and then VLIW2 essentially doubles it to 12,000? Or are we looking at 12,000 without VLIW2? And then this becomes 24,000. I've had a single source so far tell me that they think this is inclusive of VLIW2, but they are not certain and they're trying to do some due diligence. So this is just something that perhaps if you're really nerdy and you like to know about GPU architectures, this is perhaps something you could do some research on because it's quite fascinating. Um, and I would also like to discuss a couple of other things as well for RDNA 3. This video is getting a little longer than I anticipated. Um, <laughs> Um, so CapFrame X has actually been hearing that RDNA 3's performance isn't quite up to snuff. Basically, it's around two times that of the 6900 XT. And this is in gaming performance. I want to be clear here. This is not T-flop performance. Ray tracing performance is much higher. So yeah, ray tracing performance we've always known for Navi 3X is going to be much better. It's got a much more updated, much more efficient, you can actually argue, usable ray tracing implementation sorry you know rdna 2's ray tracing is not great let's just be all honest guys um and so this is something that's a bit concerning now if you've been again watching the videos for me from any length of time you'll know that i've said for quite some time now that i think that the three times figure that we've been hearing is fp32 performance and last several videos actually where i've been putting these updated specs i've been hearing 2.1 to 2.5 times and again this is gaming performance and we're referring, of course, here to traditional raster. Now, this is possibly because that we are looking at very early bring up. This is like, you know, something's happening. The GPU is not ready yet. I've heard one person tell me um, that AMD kind of had some teething problems at one point for N31. So with these performance targets, honestly, I've heard so many different performance targets Copy 7 Kimmy recently stated that he was a little disappointed with RDNA 3's performance targets. I've personally still been hearing 2.1 to 2.5 times. And it really does depend, I suspect, a lot on a plethora of things, not least of which what game we're going to be running and so on and so on. At the end of the day, with drivers not mature yet, with a ton of other you know, let's say variables, no one is 100% sure. But there is something else that I found particularly interesting. One of my sources actually told me that dual GCDs could be back, kind of, but this is not actually something that gamers could perhaps get behind, and that is basically that there is possibly a variant for pro users. So these are like, you know, the, the pro uh, GPUs, which are used for like, you know, professionals, basically for like, um, you know, 3D rendering or whatever. And apparently, you know, the duo cards, we've seen them for RDNA 2 and so on and so on. This is not uh, a new thing from AMD, but those actually could support two GCDs. Um, and allegedly one of the things i've been hearing i at the end of the day all of this is like chinese whispers it's so hard to know 100 percent what's true and what's not but i had heard initially amd had been testing or at least considering 
two GCDs for gaming variants, but they didn't do it. Now, whether this is true or whether people have gotten confused and the two GCDs were instead for pro cards, I don't know. But the way it was explained to me that it was either never just uh, never considered for gaming or they had considered it initially and there were issues and basically they decided to go for a single GCD for gaming performance. It's honestly, again, kind of murky. I have my own tendencies of what I believe there, but at this stage, honestly, guys, there has there have been so many conflicting rumors for both RTX 40, RDNA 3, and even Intel's GPUs as well. Unfortunately, we're at that weird stage now where the GPUs are getting closer and closer and closer to launch. And that also means, of course, that it becomes even harder to actually know exactly what's true. Because, for example, let's say I told you that uh, you know, a specific performance target is happening. Let's just say I had the frame, um, you know, the performance numbers of the card. Let's just say for discussion, this is not something I have. I just want to be clear here. This is not a real score. I'm about to say something totally fake. I'm really, 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 I want to be ultra clear here. What I'm about to say is totally fake. But let's assume that the Time Spy Extreme score for uh, N31, the highest in SKU, just for sake of discussion, was 23,000 points. Let's just say that that was a real score that I'd heard and I was telling you that. But by the time that launches, it could be 27,000 points. Or perhaps there's an actual issue and maybe it's not rendering correctly. Maybe, for example, the 23,000 points is with like half the screen missing. <laughs> it's not rendering stuff properly. And therefore, when it's actually, you know, rendering half the geometry now... It, the score goes down to like 18,000. Now, obviously, I'm being very, you know, I'm exaggerating a lot, but I'm really trying to explain that this stuff is really up in the air at the moment. I still feel that two times performance increase over RDNA 2 is a little conservative. I think it's probably going to be higher, but we'll see. And yeah, that brings me to another really interesting rumor, actually, and this concerns uh, Intel's 14th generation of products. Now, obviously... Intel at the moment are competing with um, Alder Lake against Zen 3. And we all know that Zen 4 is going to be a pretty nice upgrade. We're looking at like 20 to 25% IPC gains, as I've discussed in multiple videos over you know several months at this point. Uh, clock frequency increases are considerable as well. We're looking at, depending on um, what source of mine tells me the information, it's like 5.2 to 5.4 gigahertz single core um clock frequency so it's considerable we're looking at a nice leap in performance over zen 3 and again that makes sense given amd pushing out processors like the 5800 uh, x3d and obviously they want a nice generation upon generation leap at the end of the day zen 4 though isn't a revolution it's more of an evolution in design and AMD are not the only ones that are taking this approach. Raptor Lake is kind of similar, although arguably it's perhaps not so much of an evolution. Um, but there are now some updates regarding the specifications of Raptor Lake. I will leave a link to a WCCF article as they did a really nice breakdown on this, actually. And it appears to be the 3900K. It was an image that was published by one Raichu on Twitter. I'll link their account as well in the video description. And you can see yourself, well, basically, it seems like now we are looking at a grand spanking total of 68 megabytes of cache on this chip. Now, from my personal understanding about Raptor Lake is we're looking at some modest IPC gains as well. And Furthermore, of course, we have additional clock frequency plus all of those additional cores. And I feel that in multi-thread performance anyway, Intel should do fairly well against AMD. I honestly don't know whether they're going to beat them in gaming performance. My guess is AMD are probably going to be ahead. Although, again, I've not seen benchmarks of both, both running, so... Um, I suspect that the next generation of processors, though, is going to be hotly contended. Um... To be very honest, I feel that Zen 5 and, uh, well, basically, I don't know what you'd call it, like Ryzen 8000, assuming we don't get a refresh, and Intel's 14th generation, that's going to be where things kind of really 
really shake up with major changes in the architecture. Basically, Zen 5 is a much more ground up design, and I think RDNA 4 is much the same as well. Actually, one source told me uh, RDNA 4 is a little bit like not quite as much of a leap, but a little bit like GCN to RDNA 1. So, in other words, quite a large uh, design departure. And it'll be really interesting to be honest with you how all of this shapes up. This is a bit, a bit, a bit of a bitsy video because honestly, I wanted to discuss this because Twitter's going absolutely nuts. I've had so many DMs about the VLIW2 thing. Um, so I figured I'd do this update. I'm sure I'll probably have a lot more information in the next couple of days when my sources get back to me. And perhaps as well, Grayman and many others on Twitter will be also perhaps uh, filling in the blanks at this stage. I'm, I really want to know what the next generation cards are like. Because, you know, even RTX 40, I mean, damn. It's like, those cards are going to be, you know, uh, even the even the non-flagships like the 4060 have a ton of potential to me, because, again, I've said this before, but not everyone wants to drop like a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks on a graphics card. So, if I can have a card that I can recommend to people, for example, let's just say a 4060 or whatever the equivalent AMD is going to be in its naming convention, like 60, I guess it'll be the 7400 or 7500 or whatever. If I can recommend that card and it's like, you know, RTX 4060, for example, at a decent price, that is a key word, of course, decent price, um, and it's roughly on par with an RTX 3080, I'm good with that. Like, that would be an amazing leap in performance. And that really does bring 4K realistically to a whole bunch of people. Although I suppose games are also going to like rock it in performance requirements. God knows what Unreal Engine 4, uh, 5 games are going to be like in the next couple of years time when you want all of the bells and the whistles enabled. But at least for the short term, especially with DLSS or FSR2 or whatever, I think it's quite realistic for us to be playing, a, you know, 4K output anyway on a lot of games with ray tracing enabled with the next generation, particularly given AMD and NVIDIA. I'm going to be having, you know, ray tracing improvements as well. Like, it's not just going to be raster performance that goes up, right? With that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, apologies for it being a lot more rambly than normal. Um, I'm also just still, like, kind of getting over being, like, sick and, like, allergies and everything have just been hitting me recently. It's just been one of those damn... You know, like, one of those times where you're just like, oh, okay, this sucks, I don't feel well. Okay, this sucks, I also don't feel well with this. That's pretty much what's happened. So it's nothing too bad, guys. Like, I had, like, um, you know, the, the Rona, and then I got hit with, like, seasonal allergies, and basically my body's just like, gah! But I'm getting back to normal, and, well, okay, me and normal I have, like, a, a weird relationship. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, everyone stay safe. Take care of yourselves, have an amazing day, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.